DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight, RKO's great new motion picture, All That Money Can Buy, starring Edward Arnold, Walter Houston, James Craig, Jane Darwell, and Anne Shirley. All That Money Can Buy, from a story by Stephen Vincent Benet, entitled The Devil... <laughs> Good evening. ...and Daniel Webster. This evening, the DuPont Cavalcade of America presents a truly American screen masterpiece. Filmed by RKO, directed by William Dieterle... We hope you'll agree it's one of the finest pictures to come out of Hollywood in many years. Through special arrangement with the studio and the stars, we are able to present it tonight with the original screen players. Anne Shirley, Jane Darwell, James Craig, Walter Houston, and Edward Arnold. And now the lights are being dimmed as the curtain goes up on the first radio presentation of All That Money Can Buy. Tonight's play on The Cavalcade of America. This story begins in 1840, and most of it takes place in New Hampshire. One of the principal characters is a young farmer named Jabez Stone. He's one of the many debt-ridden, impoverished American farmers faced with the grim prospect of paying off a mortgage and nothing to pay it with. Oh, Mary. Mary, how are we ever going to pay off Miser Stevens' mortgage tomorrow? Maybe Miser Stevens will give us another extension. Not Miser Stevens. He's worse than the devil himself. Jabez, can't we give him some of the livestock in payment? No, consign it, we can't. If the pig hadn't have broken his leg and the horse come down with a colic, maybe we'd have been able to pay him. But now, I remember Pa used to say sometimes, when they were handing out hard luck, the farmers got there first. Here, here now, Jabez Stone. Are you on to your favorite subject again? Guess it was, Ma. Huh. So what you're always calling hard luck? Well, we made New England out of it. That and codfish. What's ailing that dog, Jabez? I don't know. Well, make him keep quiet. Why should I? Let him howl if it makes him feel good. Consign it, he's better off than I am. Hush up, such talk, Jabez. I can't help it. I mean it, I tell you. I've had more than my share. Nothing ever goes right for me, nothing. Where are you going, Jabez? I'm going out to the barn, Mary. Maybe Stevens will take some seed in payment. But, Jabez, that seed's all we've got for the spring planting. I know it. But consign it, we've got to pay off Miser Stevens somehow, or we won't even have a farm. Quiet, Chip. What are you yelling about? (laughs) Best seat in all New Hampshire, and I've got to give it to him. Down, Chip. Down, look out. Consign it. Dropped it. Dropped it in the mud. All of it, all the seed in the mud. I've had enough. Enough to make a man sell his soul to the devil, and I would, too, for about two cents. I guess nobody heard. I hope not. Good evening, neighbor Stone. (laughs) Who are you? My name's Scratch. I often go by that name in New England. I I don't want to have any business with you. (laughs) You've had a lot of bad luck these days. And yet it's all so unnecessary. A clever man like yourself, he can find money anywhere. Money to pay his bills, money for his wife and his children, money to be a rich man. All he needs is a friend to point it out to him. Like this, under that board. Gold. Gold. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Pick it up. Pick it up. Feel it in your hands. Gold. Gold coins. Yes. <laughs> so it is. Where did it come from? Oh, you know the old story? The Hessian wagon train was ambushed on its way to Saratoga? Some of the gold has been buried under your barn. Yes. Yes, why shouldn't it? Of course. People forget. (laughs) Or the man who knew about it died. Well, you know how these things happen. Gold. My gold. Yes, 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 your gold. Oh, Mr. Stone, there's just one little formality. 
I'd like your signature on this contract. Here. And when it's done, it's done for seven years. But it says I'm... I'm selling my soul. <laughs> well, why should that worry you? <laughs> A soul. Soul is nothing. Can you see it? Smell it? Touch it? No. <laughs> Think of it. This soul. Your soul. A nothing against seven years of good luck. All the money you can use. Think of it. Uh, sign right here, Mr. Stone. And if I do? All the gold's mine? Uh, that and more. For seven years, you shall have all that money can buy. All right. All right, I'll sign. <laughs> there. Excellent. A firm, fair signature, Mr. Stone. One that will last till doomsday. Allow me to congratulate you. You're going to be the wealthiest man in the country. <laughs> well, I'll be. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed, but not now. <laughs> not for seven years. <laughs> Thus, Farmer Jabez Stone sells his soul to the devil, and thus begins seven years of good fortune and prosperity in the new RKO motion picture, All That Money Can Buy, brought to you this evening on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, makers of better things for through better living through chemistry. True to the devil's promise, Jabez Stone becomes one of the richest men in all New England. Everything he touches turns to gold. But in his lust for money, his greed and selfishness have turned his friends against him. Now, six years later, Jabez has mortgages on farms for miles around, with little mercy for those in his power. He has no time for old friends, not even Ma and Mary, who are more and more concerned about the change that has come over him. Now Jabez is a-building that big mansion on the hill. What for, I'd like to know. Now, Ma, Jabez is rich, and if he wants it, he can have it, I guess. I don't like it, but I've quit worrying about Jabez. Mary, I'm worried about you, what all this is doing to you. Well, you can just stop it. What's that? I said you should just stop worrying, because I've made up my mind. I'm going to have a talk with Daniel Webster. Now, Mary, let's talk about your affairs. You'll forgive an old lawyer's legal mind, but I don't think you ever once came to the point. And there is a point, isn't there? Why, yes, but it's hard to put into words, Mr. Webster. I can't really talk about it to Ma. She puts all the blame on Jabez, and I won't stand for that. You know, Mary, I've heard a lot of odd things about Jabez lately. It seems he's not making the right kind of name for himself. Mr. Webster, you mustn't believe all that people say. Oh, no, you don't have to defend him to me. <laughs> I've been called names myself. All I care about is Jabez. He was the first man I loved. He never used to care about money. We were poor as Job's turkey and none of us minded. Now I've seen him drive the poor from the door and we used to be poor ourselves. I've seen him hard and mean. I've heard him mock at the church bells, the bells that rang at our wedding. It isn't like him, Mr. Webster. It, it must be my fault somehow. My now, fault. Now, 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 Mary, Mary. You know, Mary, you've talked to me as you might have talked to your father. And I think he wants me to help you a little. You know, we sometimes feel that we're licked in this life. We weren't put here to be licked. No, sirree, don't you believe it. We sometimes feel that the shadows have got hold of us, the shadows of evil. But it's still up to us to fight. You know, Mary, I was just planning a little trip down your way, and maybe I could have a little talk with Jabez, huh? Oh, oh would you, Mr. Webster? I almost forgot to tell you that we're having a housewarming Saturday night. Could you come? Housewarming? Well, <laughs> yes, Mary, I think I'd better. Uh, I'll be there for your housewarming. <laughs> What's keeping my guest? Why don't they come? I don't know, Jabez. I'll show them what a real housewarming is. Folks didn't dream Jabez Stone could have a mansion like this. Where's Ma? She, 
She said she'd rather stay in the old house, Jabez. <laughs> I don't care. I thought you said Daniel Webster was coming. It'd be a fine thing if my guest of honor didn't show up. He said he'd be here, Jabez, so he will. Ah, oh, so they're finally here, eh? Never mind, I'll go to the door. Welcome, everybody. Oh, hello, Ma. Thought you said you weren't coming. I saw something just now, son. I thought you might like to know. What? I met Miser Stevens going down the road with that man named Scratch. What do you know about Scratch? Well, you see, son, I've lived a pretty long spell, and I know a lot of things that young folks don't always find out until, well, until it's too late. I guess Miser Stevens got his money in pretty bad ways, didn't he, Ma? I guess he did, because it didn't profit him none. When a man gets his money in bad ways, son, when he sees the better course and takes the worst, then the devil's in his heart, and that fixes him. And yet, and yet a man could change all that, couldn't he, Ma? Man can always change things. That's what makes him different from the barnyard critters. A man's got a soul, too. But if he loses it, He's worse off than the critters. Ma, did Miser Stevens say anything? He said his time was up. What do you mean, Jabez? His time was up. Consign it, Ma. You ain't gonna spoil my house, woman, you with your fool notions. Mary! Mary, where are you? Here I am, Jabez. What is it? What's the matter? We're in a tarnation all my guests. Why don't they come? I don't know, Jabez. Unless... Unless what? Someone said a lot of the folks were down talking to Mr. Webster about those mortgages you hold over them. Oh, so that's it. You and Ma and Webster worked this out between you. You've told them not to come. Oh, Jabez. Oh, I see it now, all right. You didn't want me to have this house. You've never been satisfied since I came up in the world. Maybe you're not the kind of a wife a rich man ought to have. Jabez Stone, don't you know what you're saying? Yes, I do. I won't listen to it anymore. Then don't. Don't. Get out of here, both of you. All right, son. We're going. Go on. Go back to the other house, the old place where you belong. I don't want to talk to either of you again. What's that? Where's everyone? What's up? Oh, dear Lord, help me through this. Help me, Lord, and I'll... Can I be of any service, Mr. Stone? Where did you come from? Oh, 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 oh I've been around. <laughs> This is your fault, Scratch. You promised me prosperity, happiness, love, money, friendship. Well, just, just a minute, neighbor Stone. I promised you money and all that money can buy. I don't recall any other obligations. But uh, let's look at the contract, huh? Speech bills. This time of night. Someone's died. Mr. Stevens. Oh, but Stevens ain't dead. My ma saw him with you just a little while ago. Yeah, so he was. <laughs> Yes, in the midst of life, one really hates to close these long-standing accounts. <laughs> but uh, business is business. Scratch. I am through with you. Finish beginning right now. Oh, you're trying to break our contract, Mr. Stone. I still have a year. A year to make up everything. No, no, no. You're violating Clause 5 of our contract, refusing to continue our bargain until the date of expiration. I could collect right now if I chose. Not now. Not now. Let me make it up. Let me make it up. <laughs> Suddenly, you seem quite desperate, Mr. Stone. You know, I'm a good-natured man. I'm always open to reason. With a little uh, security, I might grant an extension. Anything. Anything. You can have it all back. The money, the house, the new farm, my whole caboodle. Mm, I'm afraid that's hardly the sort of security I was thinking of. You see, there is that uh, promising little fellow, your son. My son? Yes, yes, I... I've had my eye on him for some time. I've taken quite a liking to the boy, neighbor Stone. Oh, no. Oh, no, not him. Not my son. I'd rather go with you now, make us no matter what happens. <laughs> come, come, Mr. Stone. You're a little upset. It's not fair to bargain with you now. I tell you, I won't do it. I won't. I'll give you until midnight, Mr. Stone. Until midnight. But not one minute more. Scratch! Scratch, where are you? Oh, Lord. Lord, help me. Mary. Mary! Good evening, Jabez. Mr. Webster. Oh, Jabez. Oh, Mary. Mary, I didn't mean what I said. I know that. Mr. Webster. 
Please, you've got to help me. You see, Mr. Webster, I told you he was in trouble. Oh, won't you help him? I'll tear up those mortgages. I'll do anything. Oh, no, that's better, Jabez. Then you'll do it. Yes, I'll take your case. I'd fight 10,000 devils to save a New Hampshire man. Is, uh, is this where you said you closed the deal with him, Jabez? Yes, Mr. Webster. It's here where it all began, in the barn. I see. And this is where he'd like to collect, I suppose. Yes, at midnight. Mm-hmm. Well, how long do we have to wait? Not long. Not long now. Come in. Mr. Webster, I presume? Attorney of record for Jabez Stone. Might I ask your name? Uh, Scratch will do for the evening. Well, Mr. Stone, are you willing to give me your son in exchange for an extension of our contract? Never. Then, Mr. Webster, since there is no argument, I'll I'll take him along with me now. Uh, Not so fast, Mr. Scratch, not so fast. You'll not have this man. A man is in property. Mr. Stone is an American citizen, and no American citizen may be forced into the service of a foreign prince. Foreign? Who calls me a foreigner? Well, I never heard of the devil. I mean, of your claiming American citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> and who with a better right? When the first wrong was done to the first Indian, I was there. When the first slaver put out for the Congo, I stood on the deck. Am I not still spoken of in every church in New England? <laughs> it's true, the North claims me for a Southerner, and the South for a Northerner, but I'm neither. <laughs> Tell the truth, Mr. Webster, though I don't like to boast of it. My name is older in the country than yours. Then I stand on the Constitution and demand a trial for my client. You mean a jury trial? I do. (laughs) Very well. But uh, the case is hardly one for an ordinary jury. Let it be the quick or the dead. So it's an American judge and an American jury. The quick or the dead. You have said it. I will recall from the past 12 jurors, good and true. Coming up, up from the ground. Why, they're dead men. Ghosts out of the ground. You must pardon the leathery toughness of one or two, Mr. Webster. Uh, Dastards, liars, traitors, knaves. Why, this is monstrous. You, your jury, Mr. Webster. This is Captain Kidd. He killed men for gold. This is Simon Gertie, the renegade. He burned men for gold. Walter Butler of the Cherry Valley Massacre. And, of course, General Benedict Arnold. (laughs) <laughs> you remember him, no doubt. A jury of the damned. <laughs> Americans all. Oh, yes, uh, our presiding judge, Justice Haythorne, of the Salem witch trials who burned more innocent men at the stake than any other man in American history. Come up, Justice Haythorne. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. This trial of the Big Guy Court of the State of New Hampshire in the county of Franklin is now in session. Justice Haythorne presiding... Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, the devil versus Jabez Stone. Who appears for the plaintiff? I, Your Honor. And for the defendant? I. The prosecution will proceed. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, this case need not detain us long. It concerns one thing alone, namely, the transference, barter, and sale of a certain piece of property to wit his soul by Jabez Stone. That transference, barter, or sale is attested by a deed. I offer that deed in evidence and mark it Exhibit A. I object. Objection denied. I shall now call Javis Stone to the witness stand. Javis Stone to the witness stand. Javis Stone, did you or did you not sign this document? Yes, I did. But you tricked me into it. You told me my soul was nothing, that I could forget all about my soul in exchange for money. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is your signature. You know darn well it is. <laughs> Gentlemen, the jury, the prosecution rests. Does the jury wish to consider the case? It appears they do not. Take your man, Mr. Scratch. I protest, Your Honor. I wish to cross-examine to prove there that... There will be no cross-examination in this court. You may speak if you like, but be brief. 
And let me warn you, Mr. Webster, if you speak and fail to convince us, then you too are doomed. Save yourself, Mr. Webster. Don't speak. Go on, go on, go on, Mr. Webster. Be still! Gentlemen of the jury, it is my privilege to be addressing a group of men I have long been acquainted with in song and story, but men I had never hoped to see. You are called upon tonight to judge a man named Jabez Stone. And what is his case? He sold his soul to the devil. Why? To make a shortcut in his life. To get rich quickly. The same deal all of you once made. You, Benedict Arnold, I speak to you because you're better known than all your other colleagues here. What a different song yours could have been. But for the lure of gold, you betrayed your country. I can go on and name you all. But there's no need of that. Why stir the wounds? I know they pain enough. All of you were fooled like Jabez Stone, but Jabez Stone found out in time. Now he is here tonight to save his soul. Gentlemen of the jury, I ask you to give Jabez Stone another chance to walk upon this earth among the trees, the growing corn and the smell of the grasses in the spring. What would you all give for another chance to see those things you must all remember and often long to touch again? For you were all men once. Clean American air was in your lungs and you breathed it deeply for it was free and blew across the earth you loved. These are common things I speak of. Small things. But they are good things. Yet without your soul they mean nothing. Without your soul they sicken. My worthy opponent, Mr. Scratch, has called you Americans all. And Mr. Scratch was right. But as Americans, you can't be on his side. You can't take the side of the oppressor. Gentlemen of the jury, don't let this country go to the devil. Free Jabez Stone. God save the United States and the men who made us free. The jury will consider it better. The jury finds for the defendant. Mr. Stone, I congratulate you. You're free. Oh, Mr. Webster. Oh, that's all right, my boy. And as for you, Mr. Scratch, if I ever become the president of the you? United States... <laughs> you! You'll never be president. I'll see to that. <laughs> I lost that one. But let's see. Now, who's going to be next on my list? Anderson? Brown? No. Cohen? McManus? Taylor? No, 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 no. Hmm. Hmm. Now, you out there, listening tonight. That's right. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Edward Arnold, Walter Houston, James Craig, Jane Darwell, and Ann Shirley for your grand performances. In just a moment, we want to introduce you all personally to our radio audience. But first, Gain Whitman has a word of interest to us all. Today, in every one of the 24 countries of Europe, food is rationed. Women wait in lines, ration cards in hand, for an ounce of meat, a pat of butter, a cube of bread much smaller than the eager hands stretched out to receive it. In our fortunate America, we have plenty that we may continue to have plenty with some to spare for the old world, a sound defense food program has been inaugurated. Today, farmers are asked to produce more dairy products, more fresh vegetables and fruits, and more eggs. Eggs are one of the best foods we have, and one of the most plentiful. In America last year, we produced nearly 39 billion of them, but 39 billion eggs look small beside the 1942 quota. For the year 1942, the egg quota of the United States will be 48 billion eggs. 
Now, how are the poultry raisers going to get those nine billion extra eggs? Largely, the answer is through their choice of feed for their chickens. One of the vital elements of nutrition for high egg production is vitamin D. Many people believe that vitamin D is used only for human beings. The truth of the matter is that poultrymen buy something like four-fifths of all the vitamin D used in the United States. Buy it for chickens. Seventeen years ago, research workers discovered that vitamin D, sometimes called the sunshine vitamin, gave chicks strong, sturdy bones and warded off the disease known as rickets, and in mature birds, improved general health and made hens lay more eggs. So long ago as 1930, DuPont chemists set out to discover an inexpensive, plentiful source of vitamin D suitable for poultry feeds, and perhaps suitable for other feeds as well. At that time, it was believed a vegetable raw material offered the best possibility, maybe the only possibility. Then DuPont chemists discovered that certain animal substances were better. By passing them under banks of ultraviolet lamps, they produced the same reaction that takes place under the surface of your skin on a sunny day converting a fraction of the provitamin into vitamin D. Now, after more than 10 years of work, a process of manufacture on a commercial scale has been worked out. DuPont's trademark for the new vitamin-carrying substance is Delsterol. To the poultry raisers of the United States, Delsterol means an unfailing, inexpensive domestic source of vitamin D. It means sturdy, vigorous chicks. And more important, it means more eggs. More eggs literally by the billions for 1942. In supplying this new source of vitamin D, made entirely from domestic raw materials, DuPont makes a notable contribution to the poultry industry of the United States. Delsterol is another achievement in the ever-lengthening column of DuPont's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. And now, our all-star cast is returning to the microphone. Perhaps first, I should introduce the dev... Uh, that is, Walter Houston. Mm -hmm. By the way, my boy, can I interest you in a little business arrangement? Help, Mr. Webster. <laughs> now, now, Walter, the show is over. We're just playing Walter Houston and Edward Arnold. Uh, seriously, however, we here in Hollywood are very happy to have had the DuPont uh, cavalcade with us. We have a very high regard for cavalcade and a real appreciation of the many things the DuPont uh, company gives us for better living. That goes for all of us, Edward. And now, may I ask a question? By all means, Jane. Well, the children and I, I mean James Craig and Anne Shirley here, <laughs> by this time it seems like they were my own kith and kin. Now, Ma, that's taking on a lot of territory, but I tell you right now, we both like it. <laughs> we certainly do, Ma. But what we'd like to know is, what's going to be on Cavalcade next week? All right, Walter, you know all about that. Suppose you tell us. Well, next week, the Cavalcade of America will present a play based on a new best-selling book, Captain Paul. It's the story of that great American hero of the seas, John Paul Jones. Starting in the title role will be our good friend, Claude Rains. With a story like Captain Paul and Claude Rains as the star, I can assure you it will be a good show. Thank you. Tonight's story from RKO's great motion picture, All That Money Can Buy, was written especially for The Cavalcade of America by Howard Teichman and Robert L. Richards. The orchestra and original musical score were composed and directed by Robert Armbruster. Remember, next week, the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Claude Rains in Captain Paul, the thrilling story of that American hero of the high seas, John Paul Jones. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is John Heaston, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.